Hello everyone, in this Desmos tutorial I want to discuss uh, how to calculate some descriptive statistics. So you may be in a class where you're collecting data and you're being asked to find like mean, median mode, quartiles, uh, standard deviation, uh, doing box and whisker plots which sometimes is called a five number summary. So I just want to discuss how would we would find these calculations in Desmo. So the way that I like to approach this is if I have a list of data uh, I'm going to use a letter. So I like to use the letter A and this is the name of my list. So I'm going to say A equals and then I'm going to use brackets so I'm not going to use my parentheses here. I can go back to the ABC and use brackets um, or of course if you're on a computer you can just use your keyboard. And then I'm going to type my numbers and separate with them, uh, separate them with a comma. So let's say I have the number 12, and then comma 25, and then comma 4. So let me just throw a couple numbers in here uh, and separate them with commas. All right, so let's say this is my list of data. So suppose I want to find uh, the five number summary. Right? So down in, oh, I'm already here, in the functions button over here, if I open up the function menu and I click on stats, you can see uh, some calculations that it can do for me. Uh, I can add up all the numbers, uh, I can find, excuse me, find the length of the numbers, uh, I could find the mean, the max, the min, the median, and then all the quartiles. I can find quantiles, I can find variance, and some other calculations here. So in this video in particular, I just want to focus on the descriptive statistics. So let's say I want to find the average. So I can do mean, and then notice it brings up parentheses for me, and I'm just going to type letter A. I wanted to find the mean of the numbers in list A, and there's the average, right, the arithmetic mean of that list that I named A. If I want to find quartiles, I can go back to functions under the stats menu. I can choose quartile. So the way I'm going to use a quartile is, again, I'm going to type the list A, and then I'm going to say comma. If I want the first quartile, I'm going to type the number 1, and there's my first quartile. And then if I want, let's say, the third quartile, I'm going to come up here and click the delete and put the number two, there's my median. Remember that the second quartile is my median. And in fact, if I come down to a new line and I bring up the median of A, we can see, of course, those match. And if I want the third quartile, I'm just going to delete and type the number three, there's my third quartile of that list. All right, so let's discuss the box plot. Now, in a box and whisker plot, the five number summary of the max, the min, the first quartile, second quartile, which is the median, and third quartile, I would find those numbers and I would plot them and create a box and whisker plot. Uh, Desmos, under functions, if I click on the distributions menu, we can see that we have a box plot here. So I'm going to list. A, I'm going to type list A, right, as the data for it to look at, and here is my box plot. Let me zoom out. All right, so here is my box plot, and you couldn't see my zoom, right? Remember, these are the zoom in and zoom out buttons. So here's my box plot, and I can see uh, here's my median of 13.5. We can see right here is my median of 13.5. Now what? Uh, Desmos doesn't do for me is actually tell me that numerical value. So if that median was 13.794, um, I can't see that on the graph. So I would just want to go ahead and calculate that median if I need that numerical value. Um, but here is the graph of that box plot with that information. And the offset is basically the height. If I make that zero, uh, it brings the box plot down onto the x-axis. That might give me a little more possibility of finding that value, although it doesn't list it for me. And then the height is just the height of the boxes. So if I type 3, it's going to show the height of those boxes for me. Now, some of the other descriptive statistics that I typically want to calculate a standard deviation. So if I come back to my functions button, let me go to stats, there's two different standard deviations. There's STDEV and STDEVP. Now you should have learned in your class, uh, whatever class that you're in, that there's a 
sample standard deviation and a population standard deviation, and that is the distinction between these two. So if I choose the STDEV of list A, there is my sample standard deviation, and then if I choose the P, that's for population, and there's the population standard deviation. And also when we're talking about spread of a data set, uh, we can also be asked to find the variance. And again, back in that menu, if I choose variance of list A, there's the calculation for variance. Now when I was discussing the box plot, we talked about the five number summary being the min, the max, and the three quartiles. A little bit more of efficient way, right, as I work my way down this menu, I can choose the stats option. And when I type list A, it's going to give me that five number summary uh, in a more quick manner than having to type each of those functions out. All right, and then I mentioned these, but I didn't show you the results. So I'm going to come back and talk about the total real quick. So the total of list A is going to add all of those numbers together. And then if I look at the length of the list, that's just telling me how many data points is in that list. So I have six numbers in this list, and that's what it's uh, giving me in terms of a count. That's what's called length here. All right, now what I want to talk about real quick is suppose that I don't have the actual raw data, right? I don't have the list of data, let's say, and I have a frequency distribution or a frequency table. So here's an example of a frequency table. Uh, 100 families in a particular neighborhood are asked their annual household income to the nearest $5,000. So the results are summarized in the frequency table that is given to the right. So rounding to the nearest $5,000, right, the frequency table shows me that I have six uh, households that have an income of fifteen thousand dollars. Have eight households that have an income of twenty thousand dollars. Eleven that have an income of twenty-five thousand, and so on and so forth. So now, one of the things we might do with the frequency table is find the mean of that frequency table. So I'm being asked to find the mean of this frequency table. Uh, there uh, are one hundred families. Um, I'm being told that we're surveyed, if you will. I can add all of these frequencies together to find that out. right? So I could add all those numbers together. I'm going to get 100. Now, if I'm finding the mean, I technically need to add all 100 numbers together and then divide by 100, right? how many data points there are. So I would literally need to add six 15s together. So I'd down here have to have 15 added to itself six times. I'd have to have the number 20 added eight times, and so on and so forth. Now, obviously, this is extremely tedious. So in a shorthand way, if I have 15, excuse me, if I have six of the number 15, our shorthand way is to use multiplication. So 15 added to itself six times is 15 times six. So in essence, the shortcut is I take the data point and multiply by its frequency. And then I'm going to take the data point of 20,000 and multiply by its frequency of eight. And then I'm going to take 25 and multiply by its frequency of 11. So you can see that's what I'm doing down here. Here's the data time times a frequency, the data times a frequency, and then I'm going to add all of those together and divide by the 100. Now how would we do that in Desmos? So to find the mean of a frequency table in Desmos, what I need to do is add a table. So I'm going to click the plus sign in the top left and add table. And then I'm going to add the data in my table. <clears throat> Excuse me. So to make this a little easier, I'm going to use this table down here at the bottom instead of having to type all of these numbers in. It's just a shorter table. So in my list, I'm going to type in, where is it at? All of the ratings. So one, two, three, four and five. And then I'm going to click over here and type the frequencies that I have in the second column. So I'm going to have four and then eight and seven, three and one. Now Desmos can do some pretty cool stuff. It interprets these as ordered pairs. I can do things like linear regression. That's for a different video. What I want to do is find the mean of this frequency table. Now if we look back at our quote unquote shortcut, right? what we have to do is multiply the data value times the frequency and then add the data value times the frequency. So what I really need to do is multiply the data times the frequency. I need to multiply 1 times 4, 2 times 8, and I need to sum all of that up. 
So I'm going to go back to my functions and click on total, and I want x1 times y1. So I'm going to type x1 and then multiply by y1. And there's the total of all of those products. Now again, this is my numerator that I have. I need to divide by all of the data points. So for this example, I need to do 4 plus 8 plus 7 plus 3 plus 1. I'm going to come back to Desmos. So I'm going to actually take this number and I'm going to hit division and I'm going to divide by the total of column Y1. So I'm going to type Y1 and there's the mean of that frequency table or frequency distribution. All right, next thing I want to discuss is suppose we have a frequency distribution, a frequency table, where we have classes that describe our groups of data. Sometimes these are called bins. <coughs> Excuse me. So in this example, I can see I have a graph representing this data set and this frequency table, frequency distribution. So uh, this is, let's suppose, representing test points on a quiz in a math class. So the students that scored between 0 and 3 were two of them. Right? There was one student that scored between 4 and 7. There were zero students that scored between 8 and 11, so on and so forth. Now when we did the mean a second ago of a frequency table, we had specific numerical values here. We didn't have a class or range or bin. So how would I find the mean of a frequency table where I have classes? All right, so bringing up Desmos, again, I'm going to do a table. Now, the issue here is the uh, Desmos wants one singular value in this left column. Uh, so what I'm going to do, actually, is type each individual number. And the approach here is to find the midpoint of that data set. So I'm just bringing up a problem in the textbook real quick. What I want to do is find the midpoint. Now remember the midpoint for this data set is I'm going to add these two numbers and divide by 2. So I'm going to do 0 plus 3 divide by 2. I'm going to find their average and that is the midpoint. So what I'm going to do in Desmos is in this table I'm going to find the midpoint. So the way that I'm going to do that is in the left column I'm going to change the title here and call this L. So this is going to be like my left endpoint and then I'm going to call this R. This is going to be my right endpoint. I'm going to click to create a third column and I'm going to define this column as the midpoint. So I'm going to put in parentheses this is going to be L plus R and then I'm going to divide by 2. So my L over here is going to be 0, my 3 in my right endpoint, and there's my midpoint that it's going to calculate for me. I'm going to do 4 to 7, 4 to 7, and there's the midpoint, right? That is the average. So I'm going to pause and continue filling this out. Okay, so here are all my midpoints, and then I want to go ahead and type in the frequencies, and I'm going to just title this F. These are my frequencies, all right? And I have two one zero three eighteen six two one zero three eighteen six. So just like in the prior example a couple minutes ago, what I want to do is multiply these together. I want the midpoint times the frequency plus the midpoint times the frequency plus the midpoint point times the frequency, so on and so forth. So I'm going to have the total of the column L plus R divide by 2 and then times F. Now here's the total of those products and then what I want to do is divide by the total of the frequencies. So the total of F and there is my average for this frequency table where I have classes or bins and I've had to calculate the midpoint. Okay, so that finishes everything I wanted to discuss about descriptive statistics using either a list of data or grouped data with Desmos.